Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Tinnitus TV. Today, I am talking to guitarist Michael Timmons of Cowboy Junkies. Like a lot of bands, they started off playing covers. But unlike a lot of bands, they never completely stopped. And who can blame them? Their first big hit, after all, was their slow-burning rendition of the Lou Reed classic Sweet Jane. And their first studio album, Whites Off Earth Now, consisted mostly of vintage blues tunes. But even though they've gone on to write and release more than a dozen acclaimed albums of original material, Cowboy Junkies continue to perform and record songs by everyone from Neil Young, Vic Chestnut, and Towns Van Zandt to Dinosaur Jr. and U2. Some of these covers get peppered in with their albums, others are relegated to B-sides and soundtracks, and some end up gathered together into compilations like their latest release, Songs of the Recollection. This album finds the Toronto foursome putting their own distinctive spin on David Bowie's Five Years, The Rolling Stones' No Expectation, The Cure's 17 Seconds, Graham Parsons' Ooh Las Vegas, and several other classic gems. A couple of weeks back, Timmons and I got on the Zoom to talk about the album, cover tunes, his new podcast, Music is the Drug, and a whole lot more. Check it out. Well, first of all, Michael Timmons, thanks for doing this. Glad to uh, talk to you again. My yeah, pleasure. So you uh, you guys are back now with uh, another covers album called Songs of the Recollection. And uh, first of all, nice title. Who came up with that one? <laughs> it was sort of a group effort. We we uh, we threw various titles around like quite seriously, and they they, they it it it. it it, it morphed into from recollection to songs of recollection to songs of without recollection. So it was, it was a very, a very animated discussion, which isn't usually usual for us. Usually titles, we come up with them and that's it. But this one, for some reason, uh, couldn't figure out what it was supposed to be called. So. <laughs> well, it, it, it works. How do, you, how do you think that reflects uh, what's inside the thing? Well, it, you know, it, it does work. And that's the interesting thing. Maybe that's why we couldn't, we, you know, we we're having a tough time defining it. Usually, usually the record, the an album, it's, you know, it's filled of, of original songs. So you, there's something in that, the themes of the narrative of the songs that you, which point to a title. But since these were covers, uh, I didn't have that. Um, but really, um, you know, these are songs, a lot of them, and not, it wasn't necessarily by choice, but when we look back at the, at the, cho at what we did choose and the ones that we were available to us, they're very um, much orientated towards a period in our lives when we were young and becoming music fans, and especially the early 70s and those sorts of artists, not necessarily the songs themselves, but the artists, you know, that was their heydays. And that's when we really got into music and really, as a family, really, um, really got into, really was, you know, our, our worlds were turned upside down by music. So people like David Boy and Dylan and, and Neil Young and uh, those types of artists were the ones who really, you know, really affected our lives. So there are sort of, the title kind of goes back to that era of, you know, of recollecting that era of becoming music fans and, and being, and being uh, inspired by music. Mm. And is this indicative of, of, uh, particular nostalgic uh, period you guys were going through. I'm just wondering why you decided to put out a covers album uh, now, as opposed to, you know, another album of original material. You know, it really, I mean, you know, this record was supposed to come out probably six months ago, eight months ago, maybe. And, and it, was, it was definitely just a project to get us through COVID. We weren't touring, we, you know, we were working on a new record of originals and it was like, you know, we have a lot, we had a lot, of, we, we do a lot of covers for various reasons and for different projects and we do them live and we have some of them in our archive that we never released. And uh, it just seemed like a, a good time to just collect them, you know, collect the ones that, some of them that have been released, but that we really like and, and you know, have, have disappeared because they were released many years ago and some that we were doing live that we had recordings of. And so it was just really just, a, it, was, it started out just as a project just to sort of get, you know, put something out there, connect back with our audience and until between, you know, a bridge between going back on the road and putting out a new record. So um, it, it was delayed a little bit because of the whole big vinyl backup everywhere. But um, so, but you know, so yeah, that's really why. It wasn't really nostalgia, it was really just a practicality. <laughs> <laughs> well, fair enough. I mean, yeah. to that end, do you guys have like, uh, always have a, a giant uh, backlog of, of, of cover tunes sitting around recorded, just waiting to go on things? Or, or does this kind of clear out the closet? This kind of clears out. There's a few left, I'd say. Um, this clears out the closet for now, and and definitely we narrowed it down to the ones that we thought were strongest. Like you know, it's it's, it's a nine-song album, so 
you know, there's probably five, or, there's probably 14 or 15 songs that we are choosing from um, that we felt were contenders, but we want to get it as strong as possible. Uh, so there's still some there, but nothing, you know, def that we don't, we, there's definitely not an immediate, there's not, not, there's not a part two coming in the near future. Well, yeah, eventually, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we will do more covers, I guess we do that a lot and we get asked to do, you know, asked to participate in those cover records all the time. So it's kind of, it's just, it's a fun thing to do. We, we enjoy doing it. Well, how, how do you how do you decide what to what to cover? Does everybody toss in suggestions into a hat, or does everybody have to agree? What's the what's the process well, with that? These days, it's more of a it's it's more of just circumstance, you know, like like the the you know we do we do five years David Boy's five years on this, and uh, you know that was really we were doing a a, a, a concert we, we put together this uh, concert series with our label mates on Latent and with different, different themes for the for musical sets and uh, a lot of collaboration among the different bands. And one of them was Dead Heroes. So we were, everybody had to pick a song from a, a, an artist who was dead, who they, you know, who they respect, who, who for whatever reason. So we, we came up with five years and it was just, so it's really just tossed out there. Um, and we did it that night. And we really, it, it really had an effect at just doing it that one night really had an effect and it sort of, on us and we, we could feel it in the audience too. So we decided to continue to do it in our set. So it's, it's fallen into our set. So, you know, it's, it's things like that, that just, they just kind of happen. Some songs, some of these songs are because, you know, we are part of a, a tribute record, like the Dylan song, um, Uncut Magazine in the UK was doing a cover mount for Dylan's 80th birthday. So they asked us to do a song. We decided to do a, we wanted to do a new song as opposed to a, one of his old catalog songs. Just, you know, there's all sorts of reasons and it, th there's not a whole lot of, there's not, a, I mean, there's not a whole lot of sort of um, hand wringing <laughs> for what to choose. You know, we, we all know what works for us and what we can do. And if we do a song that, that a cover that doesn't work, we just, we throw it out and put it away. You know, we don't, it's really, it, there's not, there's not a ton of, we, we don't have to get too deep into this. You know, it's just, you just kind of choose a song. If it works, it sounds good. If it becomes, if we can make it part of our own vibe and that's good. Do you ever do one without sort of an end uh, goal in, 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 in mind in terms of, well, we need this one for this, you know, like the examples you're talking yeah. about. Does somebody ever come in and go, hey, I just listened to Beastie Boy Sabotage and let's do yeah, that, you know? As a matter of fact, that's our set now. Um, uh, yeah, not, not as much anymore. We definitely used to, because we as we were building up our cattle in our, 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 our certainly our lives that we needed songs, so we'd do that and we and we enjoy it. It, it, not as much anymore. Um, there's usually a reason for doing one, you know. Um, and often, what will happen, like for example, uh, if, if we're doing one, if we're doing a song, like if we're covering, let's say, a, a Lou Reed song or whatever, we'll often throw in two or three other, another Lou Reed song as well, just to throw it in there, you know. So we'll, we'll choose one song and then say, well, let's also do this one just to see what it feels like. So, for example, on um, for that Dead Heroes night, we also did a cover of Coney Island Baby, and uh, we also decided also to do Sunday morning that night as well, you know, just sort of to, so, you know, that, that's more of what happens. We just, if somebody else say, well, let's, let's try this song as well and we'll do that. So it, 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 it all starts with a reason, but it usually expands from there. Right. You, you mentioned ones that don't work. What are some songs you've tried to cover that, that just didn't work for you? Um, well, I mean, I mentioned Coney Island Baby, like we, you know, we did that live and and then we recorded it at the same time we recorded it and we I brought it back out for this and sort of tried to remix it and add a few things and just just didn't sit right it's a hard song to do but it just never sort of just never felt natural um mm -hmm. we you know funnily enough you think we'd be a natural to to do his stuff but you know we've tried to cover Leonard Cohen a few times and we we've played him we've played it we played a couple of songs live a few times but we've never really felt comfortable like we've never really sort of felt like we've gotten it so mm -hmm. Those have never really, I don't think we've ever had one appear on a recorded version. Um, so, you know, it's just, there's def, there's lots of songs like that. They just, for whatever reason, they just don't, they just don't sit right, you know? And, and you can't crack that code. I mean, you can't uh, know going in, oh, this this one will work and this one won't. Do you have to, Not really. the mystery yeah. remains? <laughs> Not really. It's, I mean, a lot of it has to do with how Margot attaches to it. You know, obviously the vocal is so important. Um, and obviously how she attaches to it maybe depends on how we play it. So it's it's hard to know what's 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 influencing what. And uh, and sometimes you know a song won't feel right and then we'll play it, we'll, you know, we'll just push through and it'll we'll find her, we'll find a way, we'll find we'll find a key for it. But often if if we don't sort of get it pretty quickly, we kind of it doesn't really happen. Hmm. 
Well, what's what's your philosophy when 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 you're approaching songs, other people's songs? Uh, how much do you feel you have to retain? How much do you feel you have to change? What's where's that line, you know, between yeah. kind of reverence and reinvention, and and which side yeah. do you want to fall on? Uh, it, it again, it depends on the song. Um, and it depends on you know what how we're going about it. So we we don't we don't necessarily think okay we you know we have to completely rework change the song completely in order for it to be re relevant to us. Mm -hmm. And and also we never go in thinking okay we can't not change it. We, like we always we all go with the we always go with the intention of of making it our own. And 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 that can depend on the song depending on the song that'll that'll influence how much we have to change because we want it to sort of fit our vibe and our style. So um, there's no real formula, you know, some songs mm -hmm. work pretty close to the bone of, of how they initially were. And some songs, you know, there's an element in there, like a lyric or something we like, but we don't like the, the, the you know, the way it was approached that. So we'll change it completely around. So there's no, there's no real, there's no real, um, there, there's no real formula. It just, it just at, at the end of it, once we're comfortable with it, we, it just has to feel like our song. Like, like when I'm making up a set list for that night, I don't want to feel like, well, you know, now we put in a cover song, you know, it's like, it becomes our song, it becomes part of our catalog, our, our, our set. And does it, do they have to come fairly fast? I mean, is it a thing of if you find a song and you really are interested in, in you know, reinterpreting it, that you'll, you'll come at it several different times from several different directions to try and find a way in? Or is it one of those things of you sit down and, you know, we see if you can get it. And if it doesn't happen quickly, it doesn't happen at all. Yeah, usually it's pretty fast. Like, um, unless it's a specific project, and we have, you know, and, we're, and, we're, and you know, we're being paid to do it, <laughs> we have to find. We really have to figure it out. <laughs> then we might spend more time on it. But if it's just something that you know we're doing for fun, and you know, and 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 and, and we have leeway in the project, we can choose another song. Um, if we don't get it pretty fast, we'll move on. You know, it's it's uh, we at this point in our career we we kind of know what works and what doesn't you know it's not there's no there's not a lot of mystery there as far as okay you know we we kind of figure it out pretty quick one way or the other right and have there been times when you've been locked into something and had to sort of go okay well you know we did the best we could but not really how we would have wanted mm, yeah i think so <laughs> That's right. all right which one come on <laughs> <laughs> uh, i mean you know there's there's been some where it's like you know, definitely. There's been some, you know, some some songs we've we've, we've contributed to tribute records where it's like, you know, it's interesting, but it's not. We'll never play it again. We'll never see it again. It's 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 for that record, and that's gone. You know, we're not we're not ashamed of it, and we're not embarrassed by it. Um, we would never put out anything that we we're embarrassed by that we didn't think had some value. But there's certainly some songs where that we've done. I mean, we've done dozens of them. So occasionally, you just you know, you just. That's you know there's a there's a there's a relevance to it. enough relevance we can release it you know or we can right. or we can give it to the to the to the uh, the project so but I don't think we've well, ever believe back. My count, you've done uh, almost seventy covers now. I think oh. it's time for a box set. <laughs> there you go. I, I see a box set in our future. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is there anybody that you wouldn't even approach uh, about about covering that that is just you know what uh, this is uh, this this person is too important to me or or something I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. No, I mean, have I, that much I, reverence for that that it's like just untouchable ground. Yeah, I mean, if we can do five years, <laughs> I think yeah. we can do anything. I mean, that's pretty. That's stepping on a lot of people's toes, I'm sure. Um, I don't know. I don't think so. Like, I mean, we pretty much covered everybody. I could, you know, every everybody that I can think of. Like, we've at least, at least attempted to do some, you know, um, every artist that has relevance to us. Certainly. So, no, there's nobody we would attempt to do a cover of. And have you ever been uh, denied permission by anybody? You know, you can't. You don't have to get permission. It's uh, once okay. if you're covering a song, you don't have to get permission for them. It's uh, only if you're radically if you're radically changing something. Mm. We did. A, we did a uh, probably not. This probably wasn't a great. Um, it probably was. <laughs> I haven't listened to it in years. It probably wasn't a very good idea. But when we did um, uh, early twentieth century, first century blues, which was an album mainly of covers, it was more more of like a, 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 a anti-war peace record back in I guess early two thousands. I can't remember when it was. And uh, 
we did a cover of I Don't Want to Be a Soldier by John Lennon. And we put this, we had a friend, a young friend who was this rap artist and we wanted, so we included him on it. And we put him, he had a little rap break in it. So we included that and um, we had to go to Yoko to get permission because mm. we, radi we radically changed the song. So once you change the song, you've got to go to the artist and, and ask them. And uh, we found, found an in through a friend who knew her and, uh, you know, he, but she said, you know, that she never gives permission, but she's going to refuse, refuse. And she gave permission. So that was, that was pretty nice. That was, that was sort of like a, that was like, okay, that's cool. But that's the only time we've really, really had to go to somebody to ask permission. Cause usually you just can, you can cover any song as long as you, as long as you pay them. Right. Of course. Yeah. But I would also think the definition of radically changing is, is fairly subjective, right? It is. It is. So like, I mean, you know, for example, Powderfinger, you know, it's pretty radical from what the way Neil Young did it, but then we found out years later from somebody who runs his archive that he played us a, a, a very similar version of Powder Figure that he had done originally, very acoustic and sort of ballad like we did it. So, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what the, I'm sure there's a legal, a legal something that you can look at. You know, what how many if you've changed chords or changed melodies, then it's, it becomes a different song. And to, but people generally people are quite happy for you to cover their song. They make money off it. So you know. Right. People. And I mean, uh, Neil Young's done, you know, so many different versions of his songs. That I'm sure you could find a, a pulled yes. version of Powderfinger uh, somewhere if you look hard enough. Absolutely. Um, uh, talking about Neil Young, I mean, you, you keep coming back to artists like Neil Young and, and uh, Vic Chestnut and Dylan. Uh, what, what is it about these guys that, that makes them sort of a well you, you want to keep dipping back into for songs? Well, I mean, they're just great songwriters, you know, so they have, they have such, such a such a very deep well of songs so um and, and you know there there's something about i mean certainly like a, a neil young and a dylan for sure and and vic as well you know and towns van zandt would be another one who done mm, tons. Yes. you know they're just they're, some of them like vic and towns for sure had personal we have personal connections with and meant a lot to us so um the only way we can sort of keep connected with them it's, it's, you know, it's through the music, which is, or not the only way, but that's the strongest way we can keep connected with them is through, the, through their music and us playing it. And, and we, all, we also feel like with a Towns and a Vic where, who aren't as well known as obviously as universally known as a Dylan or you know, Young, it's a way for us to continue to in introduce our audience to their music. And we feel that's a big thing we want to do. Like we, it's amazing how many times somebody has come up to us and said, you know, I never heard of Towns until you I heard your version of it. now I've got all his records. So same with Vic. So um, that's a really big thing for us. Um, for people like Dylan and, and Neil Young, I mean, that's just, you know, they're just so relevant to us as people, you know, because they, they, they affected us at very young ages and uh, really helped. They're, you know, a, a, an element of who we are, you know, they, they're, they're, their music really, really formed us. So we, it, it's something that it's, it's important and easy for us to go back to and, um, and meaningful, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, is there somebody that you would like to cover your, one of your songs? Oh, I, anybody. <laughs> as, <I> say. <laughs> as long as it pays, is that, is that what we're getting down to here? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's always flattering. Like we've had people cover them. No, nobody of, of any uh, note, I guess. Um, but, you know, people send in songs all the time and you, you and, and uh, you know, it's kind of cool when somebody does that, but I, I I have nobody in particular, but it, sure, it's it's always it's a, it's flattering when somebody does it for sure. Have you ever written a song with somebody else in mind, or pitched a song to somebody else, or do you never, never done that? Never done that. Yeah. Huh? Well, I wonder why. I don't know. I, I I've never really gotten into that. Like a lot of a lot of my friends are, you know, they're into that. They're into selling their songs or getting together to do songwriting sessions, and that I've never I've never even done a writing session with anybody. Um, would you if thought, you were asked? What's that? Would you if you were asked if you got if you heard through the grapevine that somebody wanted you to write a song for them, depending on who it was, oh, obviously for them? Yeah, I might. I, I, yes, if somebody asked me to write a song for them, I might do that for sure. Um, but the writing sessions, I've had, a, I've had opportunities to write with other people. I've never really. It's just I'm just not interested in it. Like it's a very personal thing for me, writing songs, and I, it's a it's a it's a solitary endeavor that I enjoy. So. Um, so I've never been, I've never been interested. But yeah, if somebody asked me to go away and write a song for them, I, I would, I would, I'd probably do that. Ta talking about songwriting, you just started doing this podcast, uh, Music is the Drug, where you're talking about your own songs. How, how are you enjoying that, that sort of uh, endeavor, going back in and, and you know, yeah. 
discussing where these ideas come from and how they manifest themselves. It's been really fun. You know, it's interesting. You know, you forget a lot and then, uh, you know, you, you listen to a song again with the, with the, the idea of trying to explain it to somebody and trying to remember where it came from or why it came or, and it, it brings about lots of different memories. I mean, which is what, you know, which is what the great thing about songs, not just from a writer's point of view, but from a listener's point of view as well, which is what we're back to songs of recollection. Um, so it's been fun to do that. It's been, it's been kind of, and you know, Dave Bowler, who's, who's running the podcast, he also wrote a book about us. And so he's very knowledgeable about the band. He's got, a, he's got, very good insights and he also he probably remembers more about the things that connect things than we do because he kind of had to research it so he's able to put things together for us and and you know oh yeah right and now i remember you know you sort of kind of forget sometimes when things were written or why they were written and he'll kind of give you a little cue yeah but what about oh yeah <laughs> all right <laughs> so it's been fun it's been really fun and are you learning think, anything about your own process as a songwriter by doing this uh that's a good question. Um, not really. I mean, not nothing. I mean, I I think I learned again with Dave mm -hmm. being interviewed him through the by the for the book. He you know he did many many interviews over the course of many years. So I think there was a lot of I think I learned probably a lot at that point. Um, so th some of this is more of a rehash of those of those talks, like you know just sort of going back over them again. Um, I don't know if I learned anything, but it just sort of reinforced some ideas. You know, like. You know, I, I, my, my songwriting is sort of a, a narrative of my life, pretty much. You know, you can sort of plot my, my, my life through that, which is, I think, uh, it's, it's it, it might be obvious for some people, or, 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 my, or my, some people might think that's what everybody does, but a lot of people don't. Like they're kind of just writing songs. You know, I'm, I'm sort of document. It's almost like a weird diary, public diary. <laughs> in a weird way. <laughs> Has your process uh, evolved and changed over the years in terms of, of the way you write and how fast you write and, and other yeah. maybe shortcuts you've kind of picked up along the way? Yeah, I mean, it'd be more more because of practicalities. You know, when I first started, when the band first started writing, I was single and I had no kids and that's all I did <laughs> was write. <laughs> and then as things get more complicated and life goes on, you, I, I, be, I began to sort of more uh, focus on writing periods, you know, um, I don't write all the time. I, I sort of put time aside. I sort of gather ideas, put time aside, and then really go at go at songs, you know, over a short, intense period of time. Um, but I don't think I'm really changed how necessarily what I want to write about. Um, so that hasn't changed. But how I get there is probably di is different for sure because I'm just not, I'm not always funneling it. You know, I'm not always going at it. So it's it's a different process on that side of it. But that's really just a practical thing. Right. And I'm, I mean, I've talked to other songwriters and they say, you know, that on the one hand, you become uh, more adept at things like that, like being able to turn it on and turn it off. And, and, and the, the technical aspects of it obviously come easier with experience. Sure. But then you've written so many songs that the creative side is it's kind of harder to, to find something you haven't done before or, or find a new way to say something you've said before. Is that is that your experience with it yeah for sure you, you you know you don't you don't want there you know you i could i could go in and write a set of songs pretty quickly i'm sure you know they wouldn't be of any value but they'd be songs <laughs> you know and they'd all rhyme <laughs> um but so you you do have to check yourself and you have to always be sort of editing yourself and 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 you know being honest with yourself about how you know whether you whether you're just producing a song because you're here now i'm here to write us you know I'm, i got these three weeks set aside to write a few songs and so goddamn I'm gonna write a song you know like you, you got to make sure you're not just writing for the sake of writing um that there's a reason for you to be writing and uh and yeah it's easy to fall into patterns you know you we all we all like certain changes and chord changes and you know how we get to them and so I you know I do do things where I try and trick myself whether, whether it's with new tunings I don't know so I just have to sort of find my way into the, the, the tuning to discover something new and also um especially in the last couple of records, Alan, who's our bass player, has done a lot of music writing as well. So he sends me some music, which I can, which I then work out melodies and lyrics to and, you know, structures and stuff like that. So that helps as well. That keeps things fresh. Um, so yeah, there's, there's all sorts of things. I do find the more like, you know, after doing this for many, many years that, and writing lots of songs, it, it, that's the hard part is just trying to trying to write something that you feel is fresh. And even if it's about this, if it's about the same thing thematically, it's said in a different way or come at it from a different angle. And, 
And that, that, that's difficult for sure. Do you have a lot of uh, um, songs that are kind of halfway done and, and just kind of, you know, hovering around you at all times? Or is this a, a thing where, you know, you start one song, finish one song and go from one to the next? Yeah, it depends. Like I do, I definitely do have a lot, lots of bits and pieces that I, you know, get to a certain point and just can't go any further and then, and then abandon. I'm, I'm, I'm not good at abandoning things. I like to sort of go at them and maybe I should abandon them quicker, but, uh, but I do have, like when I start a project, I usually bring, I usually kickstart myself by listening to what I've done or reading things or working on, you know, working on older ideas just to, just to see if there's something that I now have unlocked. It's like going back to a crossword puzzle or something, you know, you sort of, uh, now I see something. And um, so I, I do have that, those for sure. And, you know, every, every, every album, every 10, 11 songs on an album has, you know, four or five other completed ones that we didn't use as well as another four or five, six that I started and didn't finish. So there's always lots of material hanging around. It's not necessarily any good, but uh, it's there. It might to... all get recycled somewhere eventually. Even, yeah, you never know. Or, or, you know? Or, I mean, do you have, do you have, I mean, what's your batting average? Does a lot of it just go to the side and never to be seen again? To the side. A lot of yeah. it, you know, a lot of it ends up on bonus, bonus discs. And then we're talking about those box sets, you know, those bonus, bonus discs. Um, I, I generally, I might research, you know, from one album to the next, there might be one song that, that will, that was partially formed and the other song that will come forward. But, uh, uh, maybe one like so most of the songs are pretty new yeah. um but there might be a line and there might be just one line from another song or a, or a or a chorus or something you know that i bring forward so it's very rare that there's a you know almost fully formed song that that i bring forward but there's something there might be an element or two that i bring forward right has, has there ever been one that took like you know this one's been sitting around for 10 years and finally yeah. i got that chord change or that line <laughs> there was an album there was a song that we we did and every in the early, I guess it was probably uh, mid '90s to around early 2000s that every 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 album project I'd bring it back and the band would go, "Oh my God, this song!" <laughs> <laughs> Not that one again, Tim and we Solly. Got, <laughs> and we never even got to a point where we could put it on a bonus just to get just to get rid of it. For some reason, I just had I was obsessed with this song. I wanted to figure it out, but I never did. Um, as far as songs bringing forward, I don't think there's anything that uh, I've ever brought forward. You know, maybe certainly there's some songs I've gone forward from like one from like one project to like for example, the other day we talked to, in, in the podcast about the song "Why This One," and Dave pointed out to me that I had a very early demo of it for the "Lay It Down" session, and it ended up on the "One Soul Now" section uh, album, which is you know two two or three records after when it was first written. So that that's a long time for me to do that. Um, mm -hmm. But um, when, when I listened to the demo, he, you know, it's, it, it was basically a chorus and I just, I brought that forward and everything else has sort of changed. So it does happen. So I guess this is all leading up to the obvious question. Uh, where are you in writing for the next album? What's, what can you tell me about that? Well, I mean, I literally finished mixing yesterday. <laughs> okay. So we might do some more mixing, um, but at this point it's, you know, done sort of a first mix on the whole record. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's very, it's pretty much almost finished, but that'll mean these days, it means it'll come out a year from now. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just crazy how the, the, the delay in releasing things these days. So I'm hoping next fall for next, for a record. So, uh, but we'll see, but yeah, we're finished. We're, we're pretty oh, much, wow. yeah. So, and, and what, what can you tell me about it? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> At this point, this point I've been so deep into it from writing to recording to mixing that I, I'm so sick of it. I never want to talk about it again. Yeah, so it's good you have that, that lag time because by the time it comes out, it'll, it'll, it'll sound fresh to you again. It is for sure. But it's always that way. I find, I find it's, it's so, it's, you know, there's a lot of, we do so much of it ourselves now that uh, there's a lot of work, you know, from, from writing, from conception to finish, there's so much time involved with making a record that, uh, you kind of get you, you got you got to take breaks from it. So I'm at that point now. I need a, a bit of a break from it. I'm excited about it too, obviously. But you know, at this point, it's just like okay, I don't want to. I don't want to hear anything for a little bit. So I have to get away from the mixes, anyways, because I want to re-listen to them again with fresh ears. So it's kind of good to have a time. You know, it's it's good to have some distance. It's we, we find that's really helpful these days. But sonically and stylistically, it's it's kind of uh, 
Uh, sonically, it's very, uh, you, a lot of it is, well, it's a very combination of, of different things. There's some very um, uh, live-ish sounding stuff, uh, acoustic. Me and Mario did a lot of work up at a place north of here, just together, the two of us. And I, did, I brought my recording, a lot of recording gear up there. We just, the, just vocal and guitar. So a few of the songs are based around those sessions, which have a very kind of loose feel to them. Some of them um, are very sort of more orchestrated because they're from Alan's part of the world. So they're more kind of uh, filled out. And then there's some very loose stuff we did in our studio here in Toronto, just the four of us just, just hammering out songs. But I don't know what's gonna be on the record yet, but I think, I think we finished, I think we mixed 14 songs. So there'll probably only be another or 10 on the record. So, but uh, that's sort of the, 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 the range. So it could be kind of, it could, some of it could sound like all that reckoning. A few of the songs I, I have that vibe and then some are a bit, bit looser and um, a little bit more sort of, you know, live in the studio-ish. Right, and, and I guess you're gonna try and be on the, on the road this summer? Well, we're actually going out next week. We're going to down in New York next week for a few shows. And, uh, and then we have, yeah, we have quite a, we have a whole bunch of shows in the States in April and May. So, and then I think we're back in the States in July. I, I don't know about Canada yet. I, we haven't, I haven't seen any Canadian dates pop up, but that's the idea. Hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, do you, so these new songs, are any yeah. of them likely to pop up in, in the sets or are you guys pretty big on, on kind of keeping all that under wraps until the album comes out? Uh, we, you know, we, we did a few shows in October, November um, when things settled down COVID wise before they blew up again. And uh, we did a couple of songs just acoustically, just me and Margo. Mm. Um, so we did, we were doing two of the songs just because, you know, it's, it's always nice it's, for us. It's, it's always nice to, and refreshing to do something new and try them out. So we we'll, we we'll, we might continue to do that. Um, I don't think we'll do full band versions yet. Like we'll wait for the record, but uh, it's kind of cool to introduce a song and just to, like like we wrote it just acoustically, and then you know when the record comes out, oh, I you know maybe I heard that song before. You know, it's kind of that's what we like to do. If we if we have if we if we're sitting on a record, we kind of like we can't we can't completely keep it under wraps. So we we usually play out one or two songs. Well, oh, perfect. Well, I mean uh, that's great, and so we've got. The recollection album, another one on the way. It's uh, things are things are busy for you coming up. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah, well, and good. All right, and some touring hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thanks for your time today. I really appreciate it. And uh, if if I may, Beastie Boys, Sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start working on it right now. <laughs> All right, sir. Thanks right, for thanks your time for today. Best of luck. Thank you.